Diocese of Chicago brings you programs about the people, events, and issues that touch our lives. Welcome to Catholic Chicago. Welcome to WNDZ, 7.50 a.m., Catholic Chicago, 312-255-8408. This morning, you can also go to youtube.com slash Catholic Chicago. Mark Teresi here sitting in uh, for Father Greg Sackowitz, uh, who is finishing up with priests of the Archdiocese, uh, their, their retreat, uh, prayerful retreat in Lake Geneva. Hopefully, he's getting some rest, and hopefully, as we prepare for July 4th. Everybody here will have a safe, safe July 4th weekend. We have a wonderful show this morning. Um, We're going to talk about the poor, the poor in Chicago, the hungry, how we serve them. You know, coming in on the radio today, I heard a story about um, the poor in Africa. uh, And one of the women serving the poor said, we're taking from the hungry to feed the starving. A desperate, a de- desperate situation, and though sometimes it's camouflaged here in Chicago, we have those situations, and we're going to discuss them this morning. Serving the poor in the current climate of inflation, we have two I'll call angels who excel at serving the poor of their communities. We're going to talk today about how the current economic climate of high inflation and the gently post COVID culture is impacting both the needs of the poor and the donations they rely on. Our guests this morning, two great folks, Sister Stephanie Baliga from the Mission of Our Lady of the Angels in West Humboldt Park, and Marvin Sabido from Most Blessed Trinity Parish in Waukegan and North Chicago. Both have been guests uh, on this program and shared their ministries with us. Good morning, Sister Stephanie, and good morning, Marvin. Welcome. Good morning there, Mark. How are you this beautiful good. day? Good. Welcome to Catholic Chicago. Um, Thank you. So good. To, and you're both smiling. I mean, that's a gift to the folks yeah. you serve. Sister Stephanie, why don't we start, and Marvin, just a little bit of background on your vocation journey and how you ended up here serving the poor. Sister, you want to go first? Sure. Um, so um, I... Um, before I even was practicing my faith, I felt very called to serve serve the poor. I felt uh, very called to voluntary poverty myself. So, um, and then I had a in college, I had a conversion to reconversion to the faith through Eucharist scatteration, where I realized that Jesus is really present in the Eucharist. Um, and I, I I felt very called um, as I, I began to serve religious life and felt very called to pair my love with the Eucharist with my desire to serve the poor, which um, I discerned eventually to come to um, the new community that was being founded at Mission of Brotherhood of the Angels. Um, and um, I've, our main work at Mission of Brotherhood of the Angels revolves around um, material distribution, mainly around food. Um, and uh, we've been, um, our pantry has exploded during the pandemic. We were serving up to 4,700 families a month in wow. the middle of the pandemic. Um, now back to 3,500 families a month. Um, and we're moving a ridiculous amount of food uh, through our building, about 300,000 pounds of food a month in and out of our building. Wow, wow. We'll talk more about that. Marvin, uh, share folks, I, I'm fascinated with your journey. Share folks, the, your corporate journey into uh, ministry? Yeah, I spent 30 years in corporate America. I spent 19 plus years at Granger, traveled all over the world in international operations. Then I went to Morton South or in their supply chain. Then I, I'm responsible for a chain of cooking schools and 
I live in Highland Park and I was always involved with our finance council and my wife and I helped out wherever possible. And then I were started working for the arts as the business manager for Immaculate Conception in Highland Park. And I was there a couple months and they recruited me up to the area I am now. So I've been up here about three and a half years in Waukegan, North Chicago Park City. So it's a very a great economic need, but it's a very rich area as far as the people and their faith and their, um, their life and their passion for the church. And so it's a wonderful place to be and serve. Maybe uh, in this Renew My Parish environment, Marvin, speak a little bit about the merger, those parishes. Which parishes were involved in merging together and how does that mission? Right, well, we were Renew My Church before there was Renew My Church. Right, right, we, we created it. campuses, <laughs> right? So it, um, I've been Waukegan, one in North Chicago. Um, in those days, all the parishes are more than, for the most part, the campus is more than 100 years old. So in those days, you had the Slovenian parish and the German parish and the Irish parish and the all the ethnic groups and heaven forbid ever came to the same church or worship together. Mm-hmm. So I, 20 years ago, we merged and it's been a very successful. Um, I think in some places, people refer themselves still by the church they go to here for the most part, it's most blessed Trinity. Mm-hmm. And so we've done a wonderful job. We still have three active churches that have masses. So we have regularly scheduled weekend masses. We also have a campus that houses our food pantry and soup kitchen. And so we have some ministries that we partner with Catholic charities as well. So lots of good things going on here. Beautiful. I remember our last program too, you got a van. Um, yes, so we got you, a van. So you we got a, a, you we upgraded from our 1997 to a 2011 cargo van. So it's <laughs> and, couldn't be happier with you it. Work Except when, you work you're talking neighbor. about inflation, right? $150 to fill it up with gas. Yes. How about it now? Sister mm-hmm. Stephanie, talk, now, think about this. So you're uh, in West Chicago, Humboldt Park, and Marvin, you're in Waukegan area. Think about that. So we're ge- about 30 miles north of the city. Yeah, think about that geographically. What's happening in the middle? Do you have any knowledge of of uh, the, do you do you affiliate with food pantries? Is there are there regional areas we try to target as a Catholic church? Sister Stephanie, do you have any knowledge of that at all? Uh, yeah, food pantries are mostly grouped by what food bank you receive food from. So we were actually just talking before the show about how walk, the walk, pantries of Waukegan receive food from the Northern Illinois Food Bank, and we receive food from the Greater Chicago Food Depository. So you're kind of linked into your food bank um, more than necessarily, and that creates a uh, United Pantries, they're like our, we have like a, we meet periodically the pantries in our neighborhood to make sure that we're not duplicating services and we're not all having pantries on the same day um, and see what issues that we're all facing so that we can work through things together. Um, and then sometimes we also pass donations around between each other as needed in our neighborhood. Beautiful. Marvin, how do you, how do you staff the food pantry in Waukegan? Well, we're very fortunate. We have Two wonderful people here. We have a lady named Frances Pancha Gonzalez, who's the leader of our soup kitchen, and she does wonderful things there as well. And the building next door, we have Darlene Montes de Oca Garcia, who leads our food pantry. And so they're wonderful. They both live in a community. They both have deep roots. They both <laughs> mentioned they're extremely networked. So we try to also ensure we don't duplicate services and cooperate with other pantries so we know what pantries are open what day. So we can refer people there, you know, what soup kitchens open what day so we can offer in different services. For example, our soup kitchens open Wednesday through Saturday. So some of our neighbors, they'll have soup kitchen open on different days as well. So um, well-grounded and well-rooted in the community. Now, when you say soup kitchen, does that mean they can stop for a meal? Yes, we offer soup kitchen Wednesday through Saturday of every week. Um, we serve from 5.30, 6.30 p.m. We serve over 100 meals in an hour. Wow. And Sister Stephanie, do you have a soup kitchen connected to the food pantry or, or are you strictly food pantry? We do not have a soup kitchen. Um, previously, before COVID, our homeless population was relatively low in our neighborhood. That's changed. Um, so we didn't have a need for a soup kitchen as intensively. Um, but we had a different program that was uh, we had periodic meals together uh just to kind of build community, which we, we are hoping to start really soon. We kept, had been closed down because of COVID for the last couple of years. Wow. Now, Marvin, Sister Stephanie said you serve now 
3,500 families. Is that 3,500 a month? 35? A month, yeah. Yeah. And what about you, Marvin? How do you calculate that? Uh, we do different service parameters. We're serving over 100 people a day at our soup kitchen alone. That's four days a week. We multiplied out to get some numbers there. Mm -hmm. On the food side, we're serving enough food for about, uh, gosh, over 350 family members per week there as well. So between the two of them, we have some pretty healthy numbers. And so it's a double-edged sword. On the one hand, we're wonderful to serve, but we're looking forward to that day where you don't need a food pantry or a soup kitchen. So I think it's just a sign of the times. Our numbers are up about over 25% over prior year. So we tracked them. So we are getting increased demand. Now, Sister Stephanie, so give our listeners, we'll start this conversation, then we'll take a little break and come back to it. But how does this happen in terms of funding? How 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 do you? I know you you have some distributions, but don't you rely on private uh, donations also? Um, yeah, we receive a significant amount of our food from the Greater Chicago Food Depository directly. Um, so that's a great blessing. We don't have to pay for a lot of that. Um, and recently, we haven't had to pay for any of it because the food depository has been very generous. Um, but we do receive, we receive donations from uh, places like Target, Aldi's, Trader Joe's, Costco, um, and those places are picked up by volunteers. All those things are also free because we, it's just the food rescue from those stores. Mm -hmm. um, we mostly pay for special food that we have for holidays and for um, different special events, um, such as Christmas, Easter, Thanksgiving. Um, and so those are the things that we actually, uh, use money for most of the money that we raise goes directly into facilities and management, which is a huge cost because our building is now gigantic. So we, um, and we just finished renovating it. So we're just coming off of a big capital project. So that's what a lot of our funding had been going to recently. Um, and we're continuing to work on just, um, diversifying our food sources so that we um, can continue to not have to pay for most of our food. That's great. What about you, Marvin? A similar model, except we do pay for our food bank food. It's a much lower price than we can get in the open market, but we do have to pay for it. Um, we do partner with many grocery stores, as you mentioned, Heinen's and Joe's. In our area, we have Sunset Foods do wonderful stuff for us. Um, we do get some donations from individuals as well, some restaurants in the area drop off food for us. We do have to buy food, mm -hmm. um, primary source of Sam's Club. They tend to be deceived to there in our area, but I think you mentioned inflation and yeah. I think it's twin partners availability. I mean, we see that our poncha went to the, went there last week to Sam's club and there was just no chicken available. And wow. so for, you know, one thing, the pricing, the other thing is availability. And you talk about inflation. We purchased a freezer, a large walk-in cooler in October for $3,900. And so we needed another one because one broke. So we got another quote from the same organization and the price went up over $5,000 compared oh. to 39. So it's gone up $1,200 in six months. And the other part of that is they can't even tell us when it's going to come in. Right. So right. we're place now for $1,200 more with no idea when they're going to come in. But I think that's just a microcosm of the world. We're all living in both the consumer level as well as the, the food pantry soup kitchen level. So so you you're storing some of the stuff in your freezer at home, huh? Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> Listen for me. We we got gonna, a whole bank of refrigerators and freezers and so okay. we're we're gonna take a little break. Um, when we come back, what I'd like to talk about is how folks can help. I think your mission and ministries are in a lot of people's hearts. But the action is the key in terms of our faith. So we'll be back in a few minutes. WNDZ, 750 AM, Catholic Chicago, 312-255-840. You can go to youtube.com slash Catholic Chicago. We're with Sister Stephanie and Marvin uh, talking about how our outreach to the poor, um, we can feed the poor. It's basic, basic to our faith. We'll be back in a few minutes. Please stay tuned.
Catholic Charities offers a wide variety of volunteer opportunities to those who want to share their time and help us serve people in need. Whether it's stocking the shelves of our food pantries, helping refugees learn the English language, tutoring school-aged children, becoming a mentor to young adults, sorting clothes in our clothing rooms, serving hot meals to those who are facing homelessness, or delivering meals and making cards to lift the spirits of our homebound seniors, we are deeply grateful to all those who want to join in our mission of mercy. Volunteer opportunities are updated weekly for people of all ages at ccofchicagovolunteer.com or just call us at 312-655-7053. That's 312-655-7053. Thank you for helping us follow Jesus' call to serve our neighbors in need. I can't imagine myself going into any other school. Our school fosters growth by being a backbone to our family. My kids are incredibly well-rounded. I see a lot of kindness in them on a daily basis. One of the things I think Catholic schools do well is personalize the learning experience. You can hear joy in the classrooms. I feel that like I'm happy that I am in this kind of school. Our school communities provide students with academic excellence and character education in a supportive and stable learning environment. Come see for yourself. Visit artschicago.org slash findaschool. Ancestry and genealogy are more important every day. People all over the world are wanting to learn more about their family heritage for personal and for health reasons. At Catholic Charities, we are hearing from adults who lived for a brief time at St. Vincent's Orphanage, the wonderful life-affirming agency that operated out of our headquarters for 91 years, serving thousands of women, children, and families until it closed in 1972. Our post-adoption services help adults who want to learn more about their experience at St. Vincent's. Our compassionate staff members provide whatever family background information they can offer, along with support and reunion services. To learn more, call 312-655-7093. That's 312-655-7093. The spirit of St. Vincent's lives on in the inspiring stories that continue to emerge today. We're back. WNDZ 750 AM, Catholic Chicago, 312-255-8408. Or you can go to youtube.com slash Catholic Chicago. We're having a wonderful discussion with Sister Stephanie Beliga from the Mission of Our Lady of the Angels in West Humboldt Park and Marvin Savito from Most Blessed Trinity Parish in Waukegan and North Chicago. During the break, um, our discussion caused me to bring back a memory, and the memory is related to what you folks do in your ministry. And I was I did music for eight years at Old St. Pat's, and I had the privilege of hearing homilies from Father Cusick and Father Wall and Monsignor Dan Cantwell, who was a champion of the poor. Remember Dan Cusick saying, the miracle in, in the gospel of the loaves and fishes wasn't um, the number of baskets that were left over. It was that Jesus invited people to open their hearts to one another and to feed one another. And I, thought, I always stayed with me because I, you know, sometimes I'd think of that and know it was a miracle. Jesus waved his hands and all this food was there. And John Cusick made it very real. Um, Sister Stephanie, how can people who have that in their heart that they want to share uh, what they have, and they want to s- serve the poor in some way. Maybe they can't do it with their hands, but maybe they can do it in terms of providing some of what you need. What do you need? What do you need at your food pantry? Yeah, um, super great question. So we, um, there's particular items we don't get ever enough of. Um, to be cr- crazy honest, we never have enough rice. I'm always looking for rice. I'm oh. always looking for particular foods like um, peanut butter and jelly, and soup and some some things that we don't 
ever have enough of that I would like to have more of. So people are more than welcome to contact me and I can send them a food list of food that they could collect. That'd be great. So uh, if you visit uh, missionola.com and email me from there. Um, so that's missionola.com. And then additionally, um, we are now a diaper bank. So we we have I have 45,000 diapers that move through my location every month. Um, and I need more, I have diapers, but I also like, we also are distributing wipes. Um, and then as soon as this formula shortage ends, I need formula. We have uh, been, um, able to kind of help people through this formula shortage, but I'm going to need a lot of help once this is over to try to make sure we can get these babies what they need. So, um, if anybody's willing to help with the baby cause, um, we need help with that. Why don't you um, give your, e- why don't you give your email? You, you've referred the website, okay. but go. Yeah, uh, my email is ola mission o l a m i s s i o n at gmail.com. and uh, please email me about any interest. And we also really need volunteers. I need more volunteers. I need more volunteers that are willing to do um, like kind of menial tasks, like clean mm-hmm. um, and do things like that. I really would love some more people who would like to help uh, on the back end. Um, all these little things for Jesus. Uh, we can do them together to do great things. And what about your, and then we'll get to Marvin, what about your sponsorship um, opportunity? Aren't you the runner? Sure am, yes. So if if you would like <laughs> to sponsor me, me or the 125 other runners running the Chicago Marathon for Mission of Relative Angels, you can donate online, also at missionola.com. Um, and then also, if you would like to run the 2023 Bank of America Chicago Marathon, you can sign up at missionola.com. Um, that is our largest fundraiser by far um, by, of the entire year, and we'd love your fi- financial assistance or if you'd like to run. We'd love to have you. Great. Thanks, Sister Stephanie. Marvin, what about your run? How can people sponsor your yeah, run? Can, instead of running 26.2 ra- <laughs> miles, I can run 0.262 miles. Right? So, <laughs> I could take it from there. So, um, Marvin, what do you look- need? What do you need? What do you need? We need all sorts of stuff. We need talents when you think of it. Um, we're always looking for people to pick up. Some of our deliveries and so you know we have the wonderful punch and darlene who run our pantries but they spend so much time picking up stuff we just need them to spend more time trying to organize the teams that are working there so if anyone has a desire or a passion for that please let us know um we're also when we talked about last trip that we got a van to help us with our pickups but now one of the ministries are expanding is actually delivering to people and so we're working on saving some more money for another use van as the enables Father Tim, and he leads that ministry for us to deliver stuff to people's homes. It's a time for not only delivering food, but seeing if they have any other needs from the parish. Do they want to see a priest, or do they need a walker or a wheelchair? We recently started that one as well. So we're thankful for that. The easiest way to give it is that if um, if you go to our parish website, mostblessedtrinityparish.org, correct, and you go upper right, you'll see Give Now. If you click on any of those boxes you so choose, you can give via credit card or debit card. We appreciate any donations there. Um, If you have any specific needs, you can always feel free to contact me directly. My email address is M. Sabido, S is an apple, A is an S is in Sam, is an apple, is an boy. (laughs) I did learn my ABCs one time, right? at artschicago.org and or give me a call 224-715-4226 my my phone rings all day so i welcome a few more phone calls in there so no. um, but we're thankful for the opportunity and to, to spread the word of what we're doing s as in s s a b as in boy s is in salmon yeah um yes. now sister you're going to have a little bit of time to think about this but marvin both of you have a tremendous joy about you. If our YouTube um, viewers can see that, our radio listeners cannot. But believe me, these are joyful folks. Do you ever, Marvin first, and then sister? Do you ever get down? I mean, this is a daunting task. Uh, do you ever get down or weary, or is it always, oh, everything's wonderful? No, I think we're all human, and yeah. at the end of the day, we all laugh, we all bleed, we all cry. But I think you get energy. And so when I've had a long day or an exhausting day, you, you see the, the people you deal with and you give them that plate of food or you interact with our wonderful volunteers who do this for the love or the people that work in our ministries and it energizes and you give energy again. So, yes, I think anyone that says they don't get that, 
Um, might not be speaking the whole truth from there, but again, we, we, we you know, this morning I got up at 4.15 as always, turned on my computer. I've already been by the food pantry, I've been by the soup kitchen, stopped by church, did my rounds with a couple of the buildings. And again, I draw my energy from the, the people I interact with. And so then I sit in church for a couple of minutes and pray and try to regain Focus my strength it. to yeah. tackle the rest of the day. Beautiful. Thanks. Sister Stephanie, what about you? Yeah, I mean, I um, gain my joy from the freedom that I have through my vocation um, in that I've chosen to completely give myself to love Jesus with my whole heart. And then he can do with that whatever he wants. So, mm -hmm. you know, so like that's uh, his choice. He can, this is how he'd like me to um, ex like use me as a conduit for his love is by feeding these folks here on the West side and um, interacting and doing all the other services that we provide here on the West side of Chicago um, and do all the other things that we do. Um, and so when I'm living in the freedom that I've been um, given in my vocation to do the will of God, then I have joy. Um, obviously, like Mar Marvin said, we are human and mm -hmm. the, the need is very daunting. And so sometimes if you get distracted from doing the will of God, you can get real down on the situation, especially we have a lot of violence. I know they do in Waukegan as well. Right. Um, the violence is very discouraging, um, but the um, it, we stay close to the heart of Jesus. He can bring us bring us through it all. Good. Well, let's do this, Sister Stephanie, before we close. Give people your contact oh. info and a few of the items that you need and, and how they can connect with you, and then Marvin will do the same. Sister Stephanie, go ahead. Great. Uh, I need volunteers. Um, and then I need particular food items, which you can email me the list for, um, and baby items, um, especially formula whenever the shortage ends. Uh, it looks like my computer froze. Let's see. Yeah. Oh, there we go. go OLA mission at gmail.com. And my, you can call us at 773-486-8431. 773-486-8431. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you. And Marvin? Proteins and produce, I guess, are the two big words. So our biggest needs of protein prices are going through the ceiling. Um, you can contact me at 224-715-4226 or msubito at artschicago.org. Beautiful. And then maybe for closing, Sister, what's a prayer you go to during uh, this time when you need to fo feed the folks? And Marvin, you too. Um. All right. I'm kind of like, I don't, uh, <laughs> my prayer is more loose. <laughs> so, um, the, uh, so I guess mostly, I mean, I just, um, uh, we are, we are extremely blessed to be surrounded by divine providence. So I kind of just like sit in the glory, the glory and the beauty of what's around me. Beautiful. Yeah. Marvin? For St. Francis, right? And so I always, and so it just reminds me to, um, what we do, nothing brings us closer. Beautiful. And the only thing I would say, I would encourage folks, if you're listening or watching, you know, consider individually supporting each of these food banks, but also think about going to your parish, go to your pastor. I know, like Marvin, I think you have some parishes involved, which that that escalates the number of folks that can be attracted to the mission. And sister, you do too. So, uh, so think about that in terms of uh, supporting Sister Stephanie from the Mission of Our Lady of the Angels in West Tumble Park and Marvin Sabido from Blessed Trinity Parish in Waukegan, North Chicago. Your commitments are uh, in ministry are an inspiration. So I thank you for your time this morning and wish you well, and God bless you in all your work. Thank you. Thank, thank you so you. much. And we'll, we'll be back at WNDZ, 7.50 a.m., Catholic Chicago. 312-255-8408. YouTube, you can see us on youtube.com slash Catholic Chicago. We'll be back in a few minutes. Please stay tuned.
Do you have an old bicycle that's not being used? Consider donating it to Catholic Charities Veterans Bike Project of Lake County. Skilled volunteers are refurbishing bicycles to make them safe and ready to be used by veterans to get to and from their new places of work. We also gratefully accept financial contributions that are used to purchase bike helmets and other safety accessories. Our veterans have faithfully served the United States and now it is our privilege to serve them. For more information on the Veterans Bike Project of Lake County, call 847-782-4219. That's 847-782-4219. This is year 44 for me teaching. When I started here, there were teachers here that had taught me when I was a student. Now I'm the old person. <laughs> right now, I teach junior high math. I love when kids find what I'm teaching to be fun and they get it. They see that light bulb go off and it's a thrill. People are always amazed, what? what? You're here for 44 years? It's hard for me to believe, frankly. <laughs> I love what I do. Every summer I think, oh, I miss the classroom. Even on the weekends, I think I can't wait to get back on Monday and teach those quadratic equations. <laughs> Shape the next generation of leaders. Teach. Apply today at artchicago.org slash schooljobs. The cemetery ministry is a core ministry of our Catholic faith tied to the corporal works of mercy. It's comforting to know that our Catholic cemeteries are caring for the remains of our loved ones awaiting the resurrection. There are 44 Archdiocese of Chicago Catholic cemeteries willing to help you in your time of loss. Call 708-449-6100 or visit catholiccemeterychicago.org. Catholic Cemeteries, serving the Catholic community since 1837. At Catholic Charities, we want to remind you that we are here for anyone who is a victim of domestic violence or anyone who has a concern about someone they think may be a victim. Domestic violence affects millions of people each year, both women and men, of every race, religion, culture, and economic status. It includes physical, psychological, and emotional abuse, inflicted in both subtle and overt ways. The impact on children can be devastating. If you or someone you know are victims of domestic violence and you are looking for a place for healing and recovery, call us at 773-935-3434 in Cook County and 224-430-4977 in Lake County. A safer, happier tomorrow can begin today. Catholic Charities has had the privilege of helping people in need in Cook and Lake County for more than 100 years. We would like to take this opportunity to thank our frontline workers who, despite the unprecedented challenges of the past two years, continue to excel at their jobs every day. From the warehouse staff members who pack boxes of nutritious foods for low-income seniors, to the dedicated WIC employees who have remained open for families with children under the age of five, to our volunteers and restaurant partners who ensure that meals are available for those experiencing hunger, to our service coordinators and our professional counselors who continue their vital work in innovative ways, to our food pantry staff and to all those who work at Catholic Charities Call Center, finding solutions for every person who reaches out to us for help. Charity is at the heart of all you do and we salute you. We are hiring. Catholic Charities of the Archdiocese of Chicago is looking for mission-driven individuals who want to help make a positive difference in the lives of people in need throughout Cook and Lake Counties. Be part of a diverse, talented team of professionals in the largest human services organization in the Midwest. We are dedicated to helping people chart a more stable, happier future for themselves, and we accompany anyone in need, regardless of faith, gender, race, or ethnicity. Competitive salaries and generous benefits add to the satisfaction you'll have every day knowing that you're helping us amplify our impact in Chicago. To see our list of employment opportunities, visit catholiccharities.net. Did you know that Catholic Charities accepts car donations? If you're ready to free up space in your garage and put a stop to all those expenses that go along with owning a car, we will gratefully accept your donation whether the car is running or not. 
You choose a pickup time that is convenient for you and we will make the donation as easy as possible free of charge. You'll receive a charitable donation receipt as well. We accept all types of vehicles nationwide and you will know that your donation is made to Catholic Charities, an agency you can trust. To learn more about donating your car, call 877-786-4483. That's 877-786-4483. Thank you. Do you have an old bicycle that's not being used? Consider donating it to Catholic Charities Veterans Bike Project of Lake County. Skilled volunteers are refurbishing bicycles to make them safe and ready to be used by veterans to get to and from their new places of work. We also gratefully accept financial contributions that are used to purchase bike helmets and other safety accessories. Our veterans have faithfully served the United States and now it is our privilege to serve them. For more information on the Veterans Bike Project of Lake County, call 847-782-4219. That's 847-782-4219. Back, WNDZ, 750 AM, Catholic Chicago, 312-255-8408, or you can go to youtube.com slash Catholic Chicago. Uh, we're having some technical difficulties. What I'd like to do uh, to end the program today, I'd like to share uh, the Merton Prayer with you. Uh, at some point in the future, hopefully, we'll have a guest to reflect on the book written about the Merton Prayer. I didn't know this guest was going to be coming on, and... Uh, I looked above my bulletin board, and Merton Prayer is kind of part of my life for many, many, many years. I've shared it with many parish staffs as we do planning, not only for our parishes, but for our lives and for our future. So let me share the prayer with you uh, from Thomas Merton. My Lord God, I have no idea where I'm going. I do not see the road ahead of me. I cannot know for certain where it will end. Nor do I really know myself, and the fact that I think I am following your will does not mean that I am actually doing so. But I believe that the desire to please you does, in fact, please you. And I hope I have that desire in all that I am doing. I hope that I will never do anything apart from that desire. And I know that if I do this, you will lead me to the right road, though I may know nothing about it. Therefore, I will trust you always, though I may seem to be lost and in the shadow of death. I will not fear, for you are ever with me, and you will never leave me to face my perils alone. Well, what a wonderful prelude. The prayer must have reconnected our social media connect. And uh, ACTA Publications has recently published the Merton Prayer, which you just heard, an exercise in authenticity, which digs deeply into the powerful one-page chapter prayer from Thomas Merton's Thoughts in Solitude. I'm in. It's first published in 1956. This prayer has been so helpful to many seeking to know God's will, and to feel his presence when the road mm -hmm. ahead is not all clear. Joining us today is mm -hmm. the author of The Merton Prayer, An Exercise in Authenticity, Stephen Denny. Welcome, Stephen, to Catholic Chicago. 
Uh, thank, thank you. Thank, thank you, you for very joining much. us. It's good to see you. <laughs> good to see you too. Now, give us your uh, thumbnail spiritual journey that led you to writing this book. Well, here in the in the nineteen nineties, um, I read several Thomas Merton's books, um, and uh, and being from Kentucky. Uh, my hometown in Lexington, I was aware of the Abbey of Gethsemane. Um, and I got to the 79th page of his book, Thoughts in Solitude. And there's a chapter that is one page long. And it started out with my Lord God. Mm-hmm. And I've only and always heard prayers that started out with dear Heavenly Father and dear Lord. And this grabbed me from the beginning. And when I finished that prayer, I felt like I had been drawn by a magnet to the Lord in a, in a totally different way um, than ever I had been before. And in my in my career, I've, I've been a lawyer for, for three decades, but before that, I was a Protestant pastor for 10 years. Um, I taught New Testament Greek in, in seminary, um, went through all this higher education, and and this prayer captured my heart, and mm-hmm. um, and it it just felt like such a, a an honest crying out to God, almost Jobian, if you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. That it was different than any other prayer that I'd encountered, uh, and and I could I could sense that everything in my upbringing had been, here's how you please God. Don't sin. Just be good. That's how you please God. But that didn't feel right because as a human being, I kept sinning. And so, so when this prayer became part of my daily ritual, I'm, I'm feeling like, Lord, thank you. Because Thomas Merton said that, uh, uh, the desire to please you does in fact please you. And mm-hmm. I thought that is so powerful. And I, I wanted to get this prayer, the kind of attention it deserves because it, it, it just is uh, so powerful for people trying to connect with God. And part of it is the prayer I've used it. Well, it's like I said, it's taped up on my uh, bulletin board. I see it every, <laughs> I see it every day because uh, all through ministry, now I'm executive director at Holy Name. You think you have to have all the answers, you know. You mm-hmm. think you think you have to. It's problem solution, and that's why you're there. And in reality, yes. it's the spirit of how first how you approach people, and then how you approach. Well, first how you approach God in your life, then people, and the ministry, and how it flows. Not necessary through me, but through those folks uh, that I work with, with the kind of attitude that you're talking about, that it's not, you know, you you juxtapose Oscar Romero's um, prayer about, you know, we're, we're not the, we're not the um, builders, you know, Christ, it's Christ's plan, we help. Um, what about that in your, I mean, you went from pastor, uh, mm-hmm. our, is your denomination? What's your denomination now? Mert, Mertonian? <laughs> no. <laughs> well, <laughs> Mertonian. I love that. <laughs> that should be a denomination because I I just uh, feel called that this uh, as my legal career sort of winds down. Uh, I I I tell you the uh, the the day in 2014 when i did a deposition of a doctor at the university of chicago hospital and my opposing attorney said stephen you want to ride back with me downtown and and i thought no opposing attorney ever does anything nice Mm -hmm, and so mm -hmm. this is interesting and it didn't take long to find out why he wanted to do that because he said to me when we got in his car you know uh, i saw in your briefcase a, a book uh by Thomas Merton. Are you familiar with his, I don't know where I'm going prayer? Mm -hmm. And I said, well, most certainly I am. Um, And, and that's a big part of my spiritual journey. And he poured his heart out to me in a vulnerable, authentic way that 
very few people in my life have ever done. And at the end of that conversation, uh, I realized that this prayer means so much, not just to me, but to other people as well. And I researched that nobody had written a book about it and, and it, it helped me get through cancer and through different things in my life. So that's why I wrote this book. Now, do, do you have the book in front of you? By any means, I do. I do. Why, do you want and to I'm, read an excerpt and a favorite? Ex- well, show the book first of all, because uh, and <laughs> okay. and the title of the book. The title of the book is uh, the the Merton Prayer, a, a, a uh, an exercise in authenticity, and my friend Dr. Stephen Huffman uh, did original photographs, color photographs, and this one I love because. Yeah. It, it each chapter in the book takes one phrase of the prayer. And this picture was used to uh, illustrate and give a, ver- a, a visual metaphor of how at the conclusion of the prayer, we're saying these words um, that, uh, therefore, I will trust you always, Lord, even, even, when I, even when I seem lost and in the shadow of death, I will not fear for you are ever with me. And here, look, look, this, this guy right up there is ever with the person below on this very, very dangerous cliff. Describe, um, d- yeah, describe, so, describe the picture a little bit for our radio listeners, just so they, oh, get, a, okay. they get the visual. It's, it's a solid, um, solid granite wall. I think Yosemite, mm-hmm. I, I'm not sure exactly where, and, and two climbers are separated by about 30 or 40 feet of rope. And the one person at the top is is the safety person for the person hanging below. Um, now let's well, do I, let's let's read an excerpt. Pick an excerpt, but also you showed the book. How can people get the book? Well, it's the the publisher is the Catholic Publishing House Acta A C T A. They have uh, free shipping available if uh, the order is over twenty five dollars. But of course, it's on Amazon as well. Okay, so. great. Now let's pick pick a a section that really speaks to you as you as you wrote this book. Okay. Um, all right. It, it, this is actually in the conclusion. Um, uh, in every one of these chapters, after I talk about the phrase and, and of the Merton prayer and, and digest it, exegete it, and then talk about my personal interaction with it, I have a section called Turn It, Turn It, Turn It. And that's for people to um, uh, use this as a devotional or as a small group study. Uh, when I was in seminary, my professor said, uh, he told us about this uh, rabbi whose students came to him and said, how's the best way to study Torah? Mm-hmm. And the, the rabbi said, turn it, turn it, turn it. It's all there. And and so that's, that's sort of... Um, where I'm suggesting I'm going to be reading from page 148. As you continue to turn it, turn it, turn it, the Merton prayer could soothe your soul and grab your heart in ways you never knew possible, or it might disturb your soul and pummel you into more intense encounters with God. The motto past is prologue is well known. Civilizations, nations, families, and individuals can and have learned from their pasts so that their futures might not see the same mistakes. Likewise, positive God sightings that are repeated and shared with others have a chance to be repeated. What gets celebrated gets replicated. Your personal testimony of how the Merton prayer has impacted you can help others draw closer to God through this prayer as well. Share that testimony. Don't keep it hidden. The kingdom of God needs all the words of encouragement we can muster. I encourage you to let the Merton prayer guide you into sharing how God has led you. In my volunteer ministry at the Cook County Jail, which I did for 15 years and I stopped it during the pandemic, I often would hear this joyful and loud chanting from the inmates who have gathered to worship God. God is good, followed by all the time, Mm -hmm. followed by all the time, concluded with God is good. Can I get a witness? Beautiful. Amen. Amen. 
Now, tell us a little bit about what you've learned about Thomas Merton. I mean, you know the prayer, but what about the person? The, the, uh, the fact that, that this man came into the monastery at Gethsemane that says God alone uh, and lived there for 20 some odd years um, before his untimely death at age 53 is, is it's just amazing to realize how many books he wrote and how much he did in terms of being the most prolific spiritual writer of, 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 of everybody in the 20th century. Where did he um, come from? Where did he well, come? he was born in France. He had a, a, a mom and dad who, one from America, one from New Zealand, and they both passed away when he was very, very young. Wow. One when his mom died when he was six years old, mm. and his dad when he was, I think, a teenager. And and he ended up at Cambridge. Uh, he went to private boarding schools. Uh, some grandparents took care of him. He lived over in uh, New England here in America. And then he went to uh, Columbia University in New York. And that's where, at the Corpus Christi Church, uh, he became a Christian, became a Catholic, wow. and had his first communion. And, and was so taken by uh, the spiritual life that he, he applied to become a Carthusian uh, at one monastery and was rejected. And, uh, wow. and one of his spiritual advisors said, well, try a, applying to the Trappist monasteries. And he, he did. He asked if he could come visit at Gethsemane. He took the train all the way from New York uh, and walked into the gates of Gethsemane, above which the huge, bold, iron word letters that say God alone. Wow. And he did that on December 10th, 1941, just three days after America jumped into this war. And it boggles the mind, really, to think if he had been drafted, uh, what the world would have missed. Uh, and and he thought about that even before he wrote the Merton Prayer. In his famous autobiography, Seven Story Mountain, he talks about the train ride from New York to Kentucky and how he thought about, I don't know which road. I don't know where God is going to lead me, but I have peace around wherever it is. If it's in the military then that's fine. He wants me there. If it's in the monastery, that's fine. Well, the monastery wanted him, and he stayed there. At, at, at Early on, he started writing on an old-fashioned typewriter, mm. and, uh, and, and letters, the correspondence went around the world to leaders, world leaders, politicians, entertainers, uh, where he discussed uh, spiritual uh, matters and and, and he quickly asked for more solitude. And, and the abbot um, uh, finally did allow him to leave the uh, dormitory where the monks lived. And, and he lived for several years, the end of his life, in a hermitage that's about a half mile. I've walked to, out there to it. And it's, it's, just, it's just a wonderful, uh, beautiful a place. I encourage everybody to go visit a Trappist monastery if you get a chance. Now, you, you mentioned, well, two things. One, I know at Mundelein, I was at the seminary for 15 years working on a lot of projects, and one of the things that came up was the hermitage idea, um, because it does isolate you in your spirituality, which probably provided him with kind of a clear focus in what he wanted to pray about and write about. But you also talked about the Abbey of Gethsemane. Many of my friends, I hear them talk about going on retreat to Gethsemane. Have you ever been, and what is that like? Oh, thank you. Yes, I've, I've had, I think, four week-long silent retreats. Um, and I I tell you, it was just such a joy. Um, I would wake up in my guest room, there's a there's a guest uh, house, a guest building <clears throat> for retreatants, and I would wake up and go to each of the eight times of the liturgy of the hours. I would wow. at three fifteen a.m. and the monks would sing antiphonally the the psalms. Mm -hmm. They get through the entire hundred fifty psalms every two weeks, and then each of the prayer times, um, I would go back 
And then at the end of the day, uh, Father Matthew Kelty, a wonderful, wonderful priest who I came to, to know and love and communicate with, uh, he's passed now, but uh, he, he would speak at the Compline uh, after Compline uh, to talk about uh, anything and everything, current events, news. And there were people like me who were there uh, seeking spiritual transformation, looking inward to the self, the false self, and looking upward to, to the Lord. And, and it, it's just a wonderful experience. Now, how did the, we have a few more minutes? How, how did this encounter with Thomas Merton and your retreats, how did that impact your lawyer? How did it impact your legal career? Well, that's, that's really uh, something that, that uh, happened constantly. Uh, I, I can remember that uh, uh, in the middle of a three week trial, uh, having a, a last minute uh, uh, motion for a directed verdict by the defense firm uh, and at 1130 at night, having to give an answer to the judge. And I said, Your Honor, uh, can I have five minutes, please? Because uh, we've been there since eight o'clock that morning. I, I think I was hypoglycemic mm -hmm. and, and dehydrated. And I, she said yes. And I walked out in the hallway and went to the, uh, the bank of windows that look south over the loop. And I found myself looking at the Chicago Temple mm -hmm chapel in the sky that's way up on the 24th floor, I think. And, and all I could do was just continue to repeat the Merton prayer and, and say, Lord, I, I have no idea which it, I've got. I got two different, as a lawyer, I could craft two different responses, option A, option B. And, uh, and I'm just not sure which one it, 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 I should do. And, and if I give the wrong one, I've lost the case for my client, a 34-year-old widow and her 18-month-old mm -hmm. son. And I, I remember feeling that when I get to that spot where he says, therefore, I will trust you always, even though I may seem lost. Mm -hmm. I know you're not ever going to leave me to face my perils alone. You're ever with me. The fear was gone. And I walked back into the courtroom and I gave the, the right answer that allowed the case to go. I've had so many situations with, with fear when I was diagnosed with cancer and very, very aggressive cancer. Mm -hmm. And this prayer has uh, helped me uh, calm the fear. But it's not a magical incantation. I want to make sure that that message gets right. across. Right. It's a prayer. It's a prayer of the heart. And you know, well, I know we do this because we're going to have to wrap it up. Uh, make sure people look for the Merton Prayer, an exercise in, in authenticity by Stephen Denny. Stephen, why don't we end our program? First of all, um, let me thank our producers, Michael May, Javier Garcia. Um, wish Father Greg well. And why don't we end? Do you have the prayer in front of you? Oh, I do. Why don't, why, don't you read, why don't you read the prayer as our closing for today? And God bless everybody. And listen to this prayer closely. Take it into your heart. My Lord God, I have no idea where I'm going. I do not see the road ahead of me. I cannot know for certain where it will end. Nor do I really know myself. And the fact that I think I am following your will does not mean that I am actually doing so. But I believe that the desire to please you does in fact please you. And I hope I have that desire in all that I'm doing. I hope that I will never do anything apart from that desire. And I know that if I do this, you will lead me by the right road, though I may know nothing about it. Therefore, I will trust you always. Though I may seem to be lost and in the shadow of death, I will not fear, for you are ever with me, and you will never leave me to face my perils alone. Thank you, Amen and amen. God bless. God is good. Amen. amen.
Join us every Monday through Friday at this time for Catholic Chicago. You can stream our programs live or listen to past programs by visiting our website, archchicago.org, and clicking on Radio TV. And please connect with Catholic Chicago on social media.